Today I'm going to show how to fix an old pine wood floor that is tongue and groove and we want to fix a hole, a uh, larger hole obviously you need to have matching flooring to replace some of the pieces but I'm going to show just to show in general how I would recommend doing it so that it will be the most seamless and less noticeable fix that you can have. Here's a few tools that I would recommend using to replace the floor with is a circular saw. First of all, you can cut the pieces to length uh, with a framing square, but also it's very helpful to just use to cut along the boards when you want to take one out. Um, another tool to get the existing floor out is a fine tool. You can just get into tight corners. It makes it very simple to just cut one board only across the grain here and across the board to get it out. It is also helpful to have some hand tools, a hammer and a pry bar to just get the nails out, get the boards out, pried out in between, especially when, when they're stuck in between two boards. It's very helpful to have a pry bar and then a hammer. I also sometimes use a screwdriver or a chisel just to get in tight corners to get little pieces out or even the, the tongue that is stuck in in an existing board just to get, uh, get that out a screwdriver is very helpful. To put them back in a nail gun is very helpful. You can obviously do it all with hammer and nails yourself but nail gun just makes the job much much easier. And then there's one more optional tool that I would recommend is a chop saw. It just makes cutting the, uh, the boards much easier and then one of the things that you just won't get around with is uh, sanding the entire floor. You will have to sand the entire floor to match the stain, match um, everything that you have. Most likely you took the flooring either from somewhere else in the house, found something online that matched somewhere, somewhere close or maybe even purchased new flooring to, uh, that matched. Keep in mind if the floor has been in a room for a while, the sun changes the color. So sanding the floor, all of it, and matching the colors then at that point, staining it if you had it stained before, or um, uh, refinishing it is kind of the only way to make it make the, uh, the section that you replace completely disappear. Obviously there would be one way of just cutting off uh, the boards right here where the joist is and uh, closing the hole that, up that way very simply. But of course at that point you have one uh, long running seam through the floor and that might not be the most attractive plus also not the most stable as it doesn't really the tongue and groove doesn't go into each other so what I'm gonna show you guys is I'm gonna cut out uh, sections and I'm gonna cut them at different lengths so I'm gonna first thing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find where the joists are the next three joists that are running underneath my flooring so that I can cut out sections in these lengths uh, and then stagger them not in the same pattern so it doesn't look as awkward that it all is the same length but in the different lengths that I can do here. So the best way to mark those is if you know if you already have some spots where for example here you have a groove um, or here you already know exactly how long the other boards should be you just make yourself a line um, across those if you don't like in this example this guy I really don't have any um, besides over here so I am just going to extend over here otherwise one thing you could do is you could find the joist at the end of the room you could find the joist at the other side of the room and then just run a chalk line across so you know exactly where the line is
you can see I've taken up a majority of those boards and cut them all to different lengths on the joists so it is not as obvious that we fixed anything here on the floor. taking the groove off. The main reason why I take the groove off on the boards here is just in a section where I need to get in underneath and there's also a uh, tongue here sticking out on the last board. I am taking out the groove a little bit longer so that I can wedge it in and then still have a good and stable board. shot it's hard to tell where the floor is obviously there's a few gaps but that's just because boards are not always the exact same width boards shrink between summer and winter so that will um, expand and contract anyways so really after filling all the gaps we have some wood filler and sanding a whole, th a whole floor down at the end when you finish you won't even be able to tell where the old hole was that's one of the in my opinion best ways to replace some of the hardwood floors or pinewood floors in this example especially when they're old and you have something that matches the wood. Here's a different angle. Really, it's hard to tell, even already. Even though the, the colors don't match, it's already hard to tell where the hole was in the first place. <laughs> 